While some may have a foolproof method to editing their pictures, many of us still face challenges in how we should approach our raw files. Where should we begin? How much editing should we do? What should the overall order of the process look like? Well, me and the double espresso that I just had are gonna walk you through a very simple four-step method to editing your images. Let's get this started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. I recently got hands on with the Nikon Z5 and this camera is really what inspired this video. Seriously folks, there's so much that this camera can do. It really got me excited and when I looked at the raw files especially, there is so much information here. And while you should always try to get the best shot in the moment, there's quite a bit of data in these raw files that can help you bring the most out of your creative vision. Composition, contrast, color, creativity. These are the four things that you're gonna remember that whether you're just getting started or a budding professional looking to strengthen your workflow, these are the items that you should remember in your approach to editing a raw file. Composition, contrast, color, and creativity. Alliteration at its finest, folks. Now, while I'll be editing in Capture One Pro, this is my app of choice. The theory that we talk about, the steps that we talk about are applicable to just about any editor on the market. So whether it's Lightroom, Affinity Photo, Pixelmator, or something else entirely on your mobile device, you can take what we talk about today here and apply it to all those apps and get up and running. So I was on set for a music video shoot. They were shooting this in film and we had a couple of great shots. These are just a few of the shots that I selected to edit. And this is the one we're gonna work with today. So thinking of composition, what you really wanna look at is where do you want the eyes to go? Where do you want people to look at when they see the image naturally? And when I'm looking at this image here, um, I'm loving, let's bring up just the annotations tool so you can see what I'm talking about here. But I you know, immediately am drawn to the line here, right? The hat kind of naturally points your attention to that place right there on the subject's face and you're drawn to the eyes, right? So because of this look, it seems like it's somewhat in a reasonable place, but we can fine tune this to be more of our creative representation. So again, composition, where do you want the viewer to look? Where do you want their eyes to go? And this is something that you can play around with and experiment to see what works for you. You can use the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, or you can break all the rules. At the end of the day, just look at your image and think, where do you want your subject to look first? Where do you want their gaze to fall upon? And from there, work backwards to adjust your composition as needed. In this case, because this is something we shot in the behind the scenes of a music video, and this may be used to promote that music video, I'm actually gonna go with a 16 by nine crop. Something that's a bit more widescreen, gives it a bit more of that cinematic look. Um, you know, people use the term cinematic quite liberally nowadays. And what I mean by this in this scenario is that it feels like a still image from a movie. So we're gonna use an aspect ratio that it invites that. I wanna keep the entire head uh, there and the hat there as well. I think it's a great piece. And we're just gonna fall a little bit tighter on our subject, right? So, you know, we're gonna use the rule of thirds in this example so that you can see it falls right on the eye of the subject. And really quickly, there we go, that's the crop that we're looking for. And again, with these sort of decisions, especially when you're just getting started, don't overthink it. Go with your gut, just look at the composition, look at where you want the attention to go, make a decision and move on. Now, that was composition. Again, where do you want the viewer's eyes to fall? Next is contrast. And what I mean by this is essentially, how do you want the light across the image to be displayed? What areas are gonna be the brightest? What areas are gonna be the darkest? How are they gonna interact with each other? Do you want something that's really contrasty and punchy or do you want something that's a bit more muted? When I'm looking at this image here, the things that stand out right away is this area seems a little too hot, a little too bright. It feels like even though it might not be the case, it feels like there's information lost here. And this area just under the hat and across the neck of the body here, um, neck of the body? across the neck and the head of the subject seems slightly darker than what I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna use the tools uh, for shadows, highlights, and especially the whites and blacks, the extreme ends, to fine tune this adjustment. What I'll do is rein in the highlights first and see where that falls. And right away, 
again, because you're dealing with a fantastic sensor, a full frame sensor from Nikon here, there's a lot of information still there. We did not overexpose this to the point where we lost information. So, you know, this is what it looked like and we bring that back and you still have that color information there. So I like that where we bring in the highlights, you still get that blue there, which is gonna be nice for later in the editing. Now with the shadows, if we just slide this all the way to 100, and this is an easy way to learn your editing, it's just flip the sliders to 100, see what happens. And you can see right away, again, a lot of information. We saw, shot this at a relatively high ISO, 4,500 and it doesn't completely ruin the image. Still a lot of valuable information. Obviously, this is not where I wanna take it, but we know there's a lot of information there. So we can bring this up around 35, and you can see really quickly the before and after, right? Not too much information here, a little too hot here. We go back, and with this, we still get a good amount of detail under the hat, the skin over here, and the backdrop there, you still see that blue of that backdrop. We don't wanna use it, it was a, we don't wanna lose it, I should say. That was a beautiful backdrop and we want that information there. You can also use the whites and the blacks under your dynamic range tools and this will address the extreme ends, right? So for example, if I go and reset the highlights and just take my whites down, it's just addressing the brightest parts of the uh, image itself. So we can even use that to retain a good amount of the brightness in that blue. So just to compare that, that's us bringing down the whites of the image, and this is us bringing down the highlights. And you see the highlights, it's not a, it's not, a, well, it is global, uh, but it seems to be addressing more of the bright areas than the whites would. For our use, I'm gonna actually start with the whites, bring down the extreme, and then bring down the highlights just a little bit to rein it in. And I think that's sort of the sweet spot. Again, you don't wanna be spending so much time with this. Find that happy place, really look at your image and go with your gut and move forward from there. This is where people will start to diverge. And I'm not gonna tell you that this is how you should edit your portraits and your images and your BTS footage from a music video shoot but this is the approach that we're gonna use and how you implement it will be entirely up to you and the final image will probably look different, right? So when I'm looking at this image and I'm, I know that this is gonna be part of a music video, it might be used as marketing collateral, there might be text uh, up on the side here uh, to promote this image, I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, well, it just seems a little bit too cool. Uh, I wanna warm it up a bit. And the easiest way to do this is with your white balance. You know, you can go in and change the presets, but what I'd like to do is just take in the Kelvin tool here and warm it up a little bit. And this to me is more attractive. This to me is more in line with what the finished video is gonna look like and more in line with how we'd wanna promote this image where it's a bit warmer tones for the overall feel of this. And I already like this. And the greens here, I actually don't mind. We can actually tweak it to see if we wanna bring it back, but I think you lose some of the valuable information in the backdrop. So we're actually gonna undo that. And for me right here, from an overall level, I like this, right? When you're adjusting the white balance, it's a global adjustment across the entire thing. I like where this is going. Now, you can adjust your color at a fine tune level. Sometimes you'll have a couple of quick sliders that you can adjust, and sometimes you can get advanced and pick a color and make those adjustments. I'm gonna show you both examples and how you use it, where you begin, where you end up is totally up to you. But again, let's go back to this very simple idea, go with your gut. Don't over edit for the sake of editing, go with your gut so that you have something that you're just happy to look at and represents your vision. So let's go with a simple basic editor. We can go in and choose something like the greens here and adjust the overall hue of what we want it to look like. And you know what? I think I might just shift it a little bit more to that richer green, bump up the saturation just a little bit and just bring down the lightness. And as you can see, that's just the area we impacted. But if we go in and we look at a before and after, so this is before and this is after, it's a subtle adjustment, but what you see just brings a little bit more life to the green tone there, right? Where before it seems a little muted, a little bit more to that olive, here just a little bit more of the green comes out. Now, that is doing a global color adjustment on a specific color channel. Now, what if I wanted to adjust the orange? If I try to adjust the orange, 
it, what will happen is that it'll also impact the subject's skin tone. So depending on the editor that you're using, you might bring in a separate layer to adjust a color. I'm gonna walk you through how I do that. And you can do this across several other major apps as well. So what I wanna do in this case is create a mask on a separate layer. And what it looks like on Capture One is creating a new filled layer. Uh, we're gonna call this orange adjustment. There's methods to do this in Lightroom and Photoshop and other apps as well, but the theory is the same. We're gonna create a mask on a separate layer, make a color adjustment, and then erase the areas where we don't want the adjustment to be applied. So now that we have our layer, we're gonna go ahead and make our selection. And this is the color that we wanna adjust. We wanna tweak the orange of this. I'm gonna expand that selection. And for the purpose of editing, we're also gonna just turn it off so all you see are the orange tones. So now I made my selection, the app, I told it I wanna impact the orange tones and it has grayed out anything that doesn't fall in that range. And as you can see, it's also included the skin tone. So we're gonna ignore the skin for now. We're just gonna focus on the hat. With this, we're gonna smooth out the selection so it captures the edges properly. And we're gonna change the hue just a little bit so it's a bit more of that punchier, uh, a bit more red in the orange, right? It feels more like I don't know, maybe like a soda as opposed to uh, a muted greenish kind of orange. Um, and then we're just gonna bring the saturation up a little bit and the lightness up just a touch. I like that. I like where the orange is. However, I don't like what it did to the skin. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show the mask and more often than not, you hit M on your keyboard to turn on the mask tool. And now what this is essentially telling us is that this is where these this is where the adjustment has been applied, everywhere that it's red. I'm gonna choose the eraser tool, change the size, and now erase pretty much anything that has orange in it that I don't want the adjustment to apply. So I don't have to worry about the backdrop because there's no orange tones there. So, you know, that is not a concern to us right now. What we're gonna do is just focus on the skin. And you can be very, liberal at the beginning and then you can change your brush size afterwards to a smaller size to make your fine tune adjustments. And now this is sort of your before and after, right? Look at the orange tones, turn that on, changes it a bit, right? So let's go to our background. This is our image, right? That's what the orange looked like, and that's what it looks like now. It's a subtle adjustment, and when you're watching this on YouTube, you might not get the full representation of it. But again, it just brings that orange to a place that I like, that I'm a bit more happier with, and there you have something that overall you might be happy with as well. Now, when I'm looking at this image, one last thing relating to color is that you might wanna use some color balance tools that your application might have to apply color to areas of your image, such as the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And for this, because of that green tone, I'm gonna take the dark areas and shift them to that greenish tone with a bit more saturation. And what I'm gonna do is the highlighted areas is bring that to a little bit of yellow orange. And overall, it adds a bit of atmosphere to the highlights and shadows. It's called split toning to some people, dual toning, whatever it may be in your app of choice. All we're doing is we're saying, all right, look at the shadows of the image and shift the color to this area. Look at the highlights and shift it to this area. And that creates a, a relationship that overall gives you a mood of the image. So if you look at this, it takes it to a place that's a bit more moodier, duskier uh, than it was originally. So again, this is the before, before we did anything to the shadows and the highlights in terms of color, and this is adder, after, adder. This is after. Um, and right away, again, quick adjustments, simple adjustments, looking at what colors are present in the image and accentuating them with respect to the highlights and the shadows. And there you have it. That's the color aspect. Now, let's talk about creativity. When I say creativity, these are all the fine tune adjustments that finish the image, that polish it up, that really speak to what this picture, what you want people to see in the picture. And when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the tools that I have available, right? Look at the tools in your photo editor, almost like a toolbox, and think, all right, what are the tools here that'll help me bring out this image and where I wanna go? So 
One thing I wanna do is I'll probably address with the retouching tools is probably to heal some of these areas just to retouch out some of the fabric. Another thing I'll look at is adding a bit more grain to lean into that cinematic look because this is a music video that was shot on film, I'll probably add a bit more grain that is more filmic and less digital. Another thing I'll probably do, and you might not do this on all your images and people have overdone it in the past, is adding a vignette. Again, because of that 16 by nine aspect ratio, because it is from a, moves, a music video shoot, I'll probably add a bit of a vignette to bring more of that focus to the subject. So let's look at this in practice and maybe we'll speed this up to show you what the finished product looks like. There it is. So again, creativity. What are the last few steps, the small adjustments that you can make to accentuate that image, to get it to that spot where you're happy with? And for this example, what I did was use the retouching tool just to clean up the image, remove a few pieces of uh, fabric and retouch a few blemishes just to clean that part up. I then added a bit of grain to the image to make it look like it's a still from a movie, from a music video actually. And then I put in a vignette just to bring a little bit more attention to the subject and in a way that doesn't seem too unnatural. And there it is, like this is an image. It didn't take that long. And you know, it's probably sped up in this video, but within 10 minutes, I took an image that looked like this out of the camera. We take advantage of all that information that's coming from this Nikon sensor and we turn it into something that I would be publishing, that I like. And again, your editing may take you in a different direction, but the steps, they're not too dissimilar. And what's great about this is when you start to practice these four steps and editing your images across different environments, you can save this and save time. I can go ahead and take this and save this as a custom style for myself, choose what I wanna save of this image. Let's say, you know what, let's actually take out the crop adjustment, but I can save this as a Nikon Z5 warm film look. You can name it whatever you want. But I now have all the adjustments saved as a recipe for me, which means that when I'm editing other images from this same scene with one click, I can go ahead and apply my adjustments. And while there's a whole economy around styles and presets that people can buy, I'd encourage you to take this four step method to start building your own recipes that you can use because it'll be closer to your vision and really flesh out your creative direction. And it's something that I think you'll enjoy along the way. And there you have it. I am gonna go ahead and export this image. It's exactly where I like it, but I'd love to hear what your process may be like. Is it similar to what we spoke about here? Or do you have something else in your process, another way, another methodology that you employ to get the images the way you like them? I'd love to hear them, so let me know in the comments below. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.